and I have some pretty exciting news. The town administrator and the town selectmen have talked and have finally agreed for us to be able to establish a Whitman Museum in the lower level of the town hall, i.e. the old police station. So, up here I have the plans for it. This is still in the very early stages, but we need to sort of get everybody going. We need to get everybody involved. My concept for the historical museum is that all of the community is involved. It is not just the young folk, not just the old folk, not just the mill folk. It is to increase awareness of our wonderful town, to understand all of the history of our town and how we came about. The town itself goes back as early as 1730s when the first people that came to the area came down from Wayma and said, oh, this is a sort of cool place. There's lots of trees. Uh, we could do some farming down here. We could sort of, sort of expand out. They found out the farming wasn't really great. But as the years progressed, we went from agricultural to manufacturing. And that's when the town really blew up. We had shoe factories, we had tack factories, we had some very essential businesses, we had box factories. Were you aware that some of the original planking from old iron sides was milled, was cut, milled, and taken to Boston by oxen from the town of Whitman? Of course, back then it was Abington, but Abington, Rockland, Whitman were at that time Old Abington. So that's how we came about. Now one of the biggest things I need to explain to people is the difference between the Whitman Historical Commission and the Whitman Historical Society. John, do you want to join me? You just go in along with your talk and then I'll come in. You can pick in. <laughs> okay. So the gentleman that I was referring to is Mr. John Campbell. Um, I think everybody knows that he has the Whitman Historical Society Museum. It's down at his business in Harding Print. It's open for anyone to come and see, and he has some amazing things that have been donated to him through the years. The Whitman Historical Commission is a commission that belongs to the town. Being that we belong to the town, we keep things like public records. This is an old Abington or Whitman yearbook that was 1868. So it's very interesting to go through it. I was just reading one of the concerns was the um, roads in Whitman. They were very badly rutted and they got very muddy in the spring, so they really think they need to bring those up to stuff. I think it's the same thing now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> years, years, have changed, years have changed, issues haven't. The commission spends a lot of time going through old records. Back in 1817, I'm doing a historical research on the house at 273 Harvard Street. So if any of you know that area, as you come around Harvard to Auburn, it's the house on the right-hand side. Hi, welcome. The house on the right-hand side, it was built in 1817. For me to submit this to the state, I needed to prove that that house existed in 1817. So this is one of the commission's jobs, is backing up the statements so that we can document the town's history. Interestingly <coughs> enough, the house was known as the Major Micah White House. Major Micah was a tax collector or a constable here in town, and one of his responsibilities was to collect the taxes. 
So Michael was taking the taxes, but Michael wasn't turning them in. No. <laughs> Seemed to be a little bit of a problem, especially when the other town fathers would say, well, if you said you paid your taxes, where'd it go? Well, the treasurer of the town of Abington, Samuel Norton, decided to take him to court over it. At that time, Michael White owed about $2,000 to the town. It was about the same time that he was building that house, mm -hmm. at 273 Harvard Street. He sold that house to his son for one of the amounts that he owed. And he adjourned to East Bridgewater. Do you know where East Bridgewater is? Do you know where the line was then? On the other side of Auburn Street. <laughs> so he lived on one corner, but he could access Bridgewater on the other corner. He really didn't go that far. <laughs> so this is some of the stuff that the Historical Commission collects. We try to make it available to the public, but we don't have the space. We have a very small, <laughs> little room in the town offices up on the second floor, uh, it, which I have um, skins of bass drums from the American Legion, I have a World War I gas mask, I have shoe forms that were dug in this area. I have all kinds of collectible things, as does Mr. John Campbell, who is the head of the Whitman Historical Society. Now, here's where the two divide. John is more of a collector of memorabilia of the town of Whitman. But does not that make us part of the same team? So my goal, hopefully, now that we have a location, is to make a museum that is a, has the ability for everyone to come and visit, for everyone to participate. <clears throat> come donate. Come learn about your community. Come participate. I'm not asking for eight hours. I'm not asking for 12 hours. I'm not asking for you to be in the public eye. I'm asking if you have the ability to catalog and identify things come help us put them into the computers so that we have a record that people can search. Do you have artistic skills? Oh, we need that too. We need to figure out how we're going to display this stuff so that it is pertinent to the people coming in. I envision an exchange of ideas. I envision exchanges of displays. We can highlight the Whitman Police, we can highlight the Fire Department, we can highlight the American Legion, the KFC. All of these groups that are part of the town are willing to participate. They're willing to donate to us. We have no place to put it. Now we do. So my biggest point is if we don't take advantage of this, we're going to lose it. We are in a predicament that the town of Whitman right now has community preservation funds coming in. The town has some funds available. There are grants available out there that we can participate in. All of this is important. And if you have any of the skills, I'm asking you to help. Can you help type something up on the computer? Can you help record something? Can you help take something in? Anything will be helpful. So there's my, there's my offers to you. Any thoughts, ideas, I am absolutely open to them. Please bring them forward. Um, we do have a website on the Historical Commission, we have 
a Facebook page that is open to anybody's commentary. <clears throat> this has to be an exchange of ideas. It can't be my idea. It can't be anybody's singular idea. It has to be everybody's vision. I have a question. Absolutely. How does the space in that drawing compare with the space John has now? Um, this drawing as present shows me a space of about 48 by 48. And this is negotiable. What is yours, John, you know? So I'm showing probably a little over seven now. Seven. With the two rooms. Okay, 7,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. What's 48 then 48? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, I don't really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my math stinks, so. Um, I'm researching that. What exactly did the selectmen say at their meeting regarding the, um, the use of the? They have <clears throat> approved it for us to move forward. Dan, do you want to speak uh, to that? Uh, Dan Salucci? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've been an advocate for this. As soon as the new police station was built and they were out of there, that was my first thing when Frank and I, when Frank was at the time, he said, what do you think we got to do with the old building? I said, we need a museum. We don't have a museum. I said, John has, has his museum. At that time, I think you were in the shoe, with the shoe factory, right? And at the time, I said, John can't be there forever. And if he's going to move, I mean, you know, does he want to continue that? You know, I mean, he can't be there 24-7 if people want to go. So. He says, well, we've got to decide what the town needs it for. I said, okay. And of course, it went on and on and on and on, right? And nothing happened, right? And then we hired somebody that would work on maintenance. And of course, I would walk through the old police station, and there was just junk down there. Right? It looked like somebody had evacuated right. very quickly. Right. And one of the issues Frank said that we needed for was for storage of records in certain areas. So what we did was we took the cells that we had and we put storage in there for record. And I'm saying to myself, thinking now, um, it would be nice if we have, there's a couple of offices that are down there, close to the town hall end. And I know Todd is using one which he needs, but there's a couple more. Maybe we can transfer, there's small offices, you know, maybe there's, oh, I know you're close to that. You know, very small, but maybe we can store what he has in the cells in those two rooms, which will make it on to uh, make it right behind the town building, and from that point on to the street would be wide open for a museum. Now, I was talking to Marie, and she said that uh, they would like the town, I, I don't know if Lincoln said anything to you or not, would like to keep the garage area for maintenance purposes. Mm -hmm. Me personally, it's a shame that we can't use that garage area. I agree. Right? But I mean, that we'll just have to, we'll see. This um, is a negotiable issue. Right. Maybe, uh, I mean, we need it for like, um, for repairing things, but mostly to store like snow blowers and things like that, right? In their equipment. Um, maybe we can put a shed someplace. I don't know. You know, um, but and with that being said, we'll have okay. to look at it. But I finally convinced uh, when Frank left. You know, it was, the issue was gone, wait a couple, you know, wait a while. I finally, you know, I talked to Lincoln about it and I just thought, we need to do something with the old building. We need, a, we need a museum. We don't have one. John can't keep it where he has it because I don't know, I mean, we're old, John. <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know, it, it needs to be in a spot where it will be there forever. You know, unless we come up with a nice huge building someplace, you know. Maybe like the senior center if they have a move. You know, a separate <coughs> building entirely, but that's another story. But and he agrees. He said we got to do something with it. So um, I've talked. I've talked to Marie about it. I've been pushing for it and pushing for it. And finally, the selectmen say, "Okay, we're not using that section. We might as well use it for something. Let's go with that." Now the question is, um, how do we get accomplished in that section, cleaning it out, and what we're going to do with it? It's all town property. Do we have to auction it off, or do can we just uh, can we just get rid of it? You know, or either that or get rid of it for scraps or something. I don't know. There are mattresses down there. Really? Yeah. Oh, probably from the cells? No. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, so anyways, um, once we decide what the town needs for space down there, right, and how and, and, and where we're going to do it, then we can go in, 
clean it out, you know, whether we have to get a dumpster or whatever we have to do, clean it all out. Um, and I think that would be something that we maybe get the high school seniors to come and help us. The young muscles, not us old guys, right? <laughs> The young muscles to maybe uh, come down and help us clean all that out Absolutely. and move the stuff. Um, my wife tells me to move a chair from one room to another, and I'm going to say, okay, and then I sit down for two hours. <laughs> um, and that would also utilize and bring some value into the whole area because that would utilize the young students. Right. I don't want to eliminate anybody in the community. If they wish to participate, include them. Right. The football team, the Eagle Scouts, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the American Legion, the KSC, the VFW, anybody that is willing to help us participate, put in a little bit, a lot, come join us. So I guess where the selectmen stand right now is once we decide exactly what we need in that section of the building and where the museum will stop and town hall will move on. It's going to, you know, where we can go. Because I'd like to see us include the cells. I would too. You know, in the museum. Yeah. The old police I was station. Thinking, I was thinking that same thing. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, my wife and I would go to different museums and we'd go on vacation. And if there were cells there, just for fun, I would get in there and she'd take a picture of me. Yeah. Fun, right? So, you know, you may want to, you know, people may want to take pictures of them being in there. That's something. Just. You know. Not to mention that some of the things that have more value um, could be locked away inside of it. Yeah. It could still be visible, but right. it would be safe from hands right. being touched. Right, and a lot of things that John has at, 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 down in his uh, museum, it's going to have to be what, taken apart and then put back together. I mean. You say it's easy. I mean, you did it. Three times. You right. did it three times. So he'll be mostly saying, "Do this, this, and this." Not doing it because that, that's fine. I have, you know, that's what we want. That is huge. That's a huge undertaking. So I mean, um, and then we can decide, looking at what he has, looking at what we have, where it would be appropriate to put him as far as space needs. But I mean, once we get all that decided and everything cleaned up, we just stop moving. Uh, if anything has to be done. Uh, I've already talked to Tom Hickey at South Shore Votech. Uh, providing there's no asbestos or if there is, it's cleaned out or we take care of it. We can have the te uh, one of the, the, the teachers come down, look at what we'd like to get accomplished, and if South Shore Votech kids can do it, it's a project. The, um, Bobby Karn has already sent the plans out to a structural engineer yeah. to let us know what walls can come down and right, what yeah. walls cannot. Right. Um, I don't know about them. I don't. I don't know about them breaking walls down. I don't know. That's Tom. You know, when he we sends can, somebody down, he'll let us know exactly what the kids can do. I mean, they've built houses. Yeah. Yes, they have. Right. You know, just had, they had to lay. Somebody had to bring in the foundation, and then they built houses. The uh, um, so I'm they put in sure the play, air conditioning. You know, yeah. They can in my home. Yeah. yeah. So well, we'll see. We we'll go from there. I'd like to recognize Dawn Byers from the Cultural Council. Hi, John. Hi, Hi, Marie. I had a question because you mentioned um, funding for this renovation, if you will, from community preservation funds, which uh, do you have an idea of how much? And that would probably be approved at town meeting, right? So we'd be looking for Yes, that and that, that is something that I am going to rely on people to be doing. I do not know the ins and outs of all of this. So that is what I am looking for as one of the pieces of this puzzle is how do we get in and out? How do we get the information that we know to supply us with the money that we're going to need? Thank you. As far as that question goes, do they know how much they anticipate collecting? Right, you're well, shaking your head. It's um, the Historical Commission. I'm the liaison from the Historical Commission, Helene Bergeron. Um, they receive 10% of whatever is given to the town as a guarantee. Mm -hmm. And then any additional is all, um, and of course with town meeting approval, but it's a 10% okay. allotment for Has the to historical, be used historical. Right. And then anything above the other sections of that, they each have a 10% 
um, Section 2 housing and um, recreation. recreation. And above that, then a decision is made, what do we do with the balance of the money? Mm -hmm. Does it go to housing? Does it go to historical? Does it, it be go used, to however. Yeah. yeah, it's a determination by, it's a recommendation by the CPA board, yeah. and then it's voted by the town meeting. But right now, I believe I read somewhere that it looks like anticipating for when we get our first go at it, it could be twenty thousand dollars for historical. So, and that's just an estimate. Yep. That's based on whatever the taxes have been collected, etc. Actually, if I could add to that. Yes, Justin. So, Justin Evans, another, yeah, another selectman. Um, the town. For the entire CPA, our estimates right now would be next next year we would have about 200,000 eligible to spend. And the state this year is matching 43% of that. That's impressive. Um, we are not going to be eligible for the match this year. We'll get a match next year based on what we, re we mm -hmm. uh, have this year. So hopefully it stays that high. So that 20,000 that would have to go to historical projects could be closer to 30. My my beginning thoughts on all of this is that we need to strike while the fire is hot. We have the space. We have a groundswell of people that want this available to people. Um, the commission certainly has the manpower and the will to begin to do this. Other parts of the community, the selectmen are behind us, CP, the Cultural Council is behind us. CPA money is available. Can somebody tell me why this isn't a good time to go forward? Yes. I, I, I don't. I think it's a great time to go forward. That's not why I'm raising my hand. Sorry. Wrong timing. Um, um, I'm Molly Schnabel. And, um, I have been on a historic commission um, in Rockland, and I worked on the 300 oldest houses. And, and one of the things that I would like to just, it's been a while since I've been on that commission, but I'd like to make sure that, that I understand the rules and regulations between a commission and a society. Thank you. Because as I understand it, a commission can't own what John has. Right. And I think this is, is the elephant in the middle of the room that we need to discuss. Thank you. Because somewhere in the plans, the commission should have a certain area for the historic information that they're allowed to keep. And then all the rest should be for John's museum, because that's the type of thing the society can do. And then the other part of it is in the funding. When they say that the funding, and, and I haven't worked with any of uh, uh, CPA things, but in, when they talk about the funding, <clears throat> how, how does the funding work? Does, can, you, can the society get a certain amount for historic preservation of society and another amount for commission? So that those we could two work divisions, as a team. I think that the, A, the first thing is, you're, you're funded uh, in a government uh, procedure so that you don't want to lose anything there. <clears throat> and you certainly don't want to have to come in afterward and say, oh, gee. But to protect what John has, which I've used his stuff, it's phenomenal. It it's is. phenomenal. But I think some of, some of the things that John has could go to commission. And then some could be, you know, like some of your records would be like things that the commission could hold. Well, John and I, first of all, commission versus society. Commission belongs to the town. Society is a private organization. They do their own fundraising. They have their own support system. Are there grants out there available for that? Yes, there are. There are matching grants. There are all kinds of things available. I believe that we could incorporate both. Um, I'm also on the board of the Dyer Memorial Library, which houses many of the pieces from the Historical Society of Old Abington. But they, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead, Molly. To me, to me, part of the thing is commission, as you well know, all of you that are here on commission, and, and um, 
you you have to be able to what it, what are your orders? Let's let's just talk about it. what are the orders because I think people I know certainly um, when I was doing this in Rockland there was a lot of confusion between commission and society and 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 again the Dyer and the old Abington Society was one entity and then the commission and people kept coming to the commission. And now they have a, a very large room in the McKinley School loaded with things that they're not supposed to have. So they're working with the library to move those back in. Mm -hmm. But I think the first thing is to just try to make it so that everybody understands, really understands what the commission can do. Um, and, and I think um, most of it seems to me to be things, and, and again, it's been a while since I've done it, but um, you're supposed to be in the commission preserving information about the oldest parts of the town. Correct. Whereas John is preserving things like, I'm going to go right for the King's Castle land, John. <laughs> I love the King's Castle land. Everyone does. I mean, yeah. the, the whole thing about the history is wonderful, but then you have the different things as to what the commission is led to do. Uh, and I think that that really needs to be understood before we do anything else, because if you don't, you mix them together, and then you're not you're not going to of a commission. Are you trying to talk on that? Go for it, John. <clears throat> Please, John. <laughs> All right. But anybody that doesn't know me, I've been around town for a while. I've run Harding Print for 60 years now. Um, I didn't realize it. I looked back. Um, when I started the museum, it was 19 years ago, uh, in, in the Bostonian Shoe Factory, which I owned at the time. But what she's trying to explain, the difference between the society and the commission. I also run President of Halifax Society in Halifax and run the museum in Halifax. Uh, the commission is just what she said. It's basically to activate and, and, and record all the older properties in town. Recognize, preserve, and protect. Right. Mm -hmm. The society can do so much more to run the museum. If the commission's name is attached to the museum, they can't collect dues, or they can, but if the funds go into the town. And to get that money back, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. right there. So, they can't organize fundraisers, they can't collect dues, they can't accept monetary funds. Uh, it's really serious to what we're trying to do here now. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have the commission's name on the museum. Well, I because think if, if we're, you, Well, we're well established, yeah. 19 years. We have a board, we have pretty near $10,000 in the treasury. Uh, to run it because you're always looking for something where if the commission was in charge, you'd have to go to town meeting or to to that. It, it's mm -hmm. it's a big thing, commission against society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I've got another addition to that. Yeah. Um, we ran into this again in Rockland, part of all that part of it. Um, and it was with the library. Because you had the friends of the library and then they couldn't, there was conflicts with how to raise money, once again, and it, it's the same situation. So what we did is we went to the federal or in the state level and asked for a combination of, so it now reads Friends of the Library and Foundation or something like, I can't remember the full name, but it was a way that it had two arms to it. And I think that if we, you know, um, the selectman or um, the town manager, I think, might be able to lead us into something like that. But these types of things, I think, um, so that was a, a tax situation, and, and that's what I think I'm trying to avoid. Okay. Because when they did the foundation at the library, when we came back, the foundation then became defunct. And so when they formed the Friends of the Library, which, so let's say the foundation would be the commission, and the Friends would be the society. So we, we went to the state level and we found out what we had to do, and, and part of the problem was taxation. 
And uh, so we had to get that all corrected before we could form anything. Okay. This is really lucky that we're talking about it now before that, that happens. Because once you get that to happen, it's like dying and going to hell. You know, you, you, just, you, you just can't get it straightened away and it takes years. Mm -hmm. But I think that if, if, we, if we look at, at um, uh, there's a place on, on Mass Avenue uh, that is involved with foundations for the state. And, um, you know, and certainly I, I know the person who handled all of this in Rockland and I can ask her, you know, how, how far she, she went with that to find out. But exactly what John just said, you know, the society can raise those funds just like the foundation could raise Ken, those funds. Ken, that's Tony. Would you go get him? Why? I think he's lost. I'm sorry. That's okay. But that I don't have anything more to say. But I, I, I think that that's, that's something to look into. And that way you can have them housed in the same. Okay. One of the statements that I have tried to make is that this would be known as a, the Whitman Museum not the Whitman Historical Commission Museum? Yeah, if you have it as, as, as the, the museum, and then you have an office within in that, and you have a sign on the front. It's, it's like the almshouse, when the almshouse was something that uh, in Lockland was one of the things that our commission saved, and we had to do separation, and we had to go to town meeting, and all the things that you're talking about now, we did. And we saved that building, and, and look at how well it's being used. I mean, it's, it's really being used. Um, John and I were very fortunate. I got a call oh, probably a year ago that the assistant librarian here in the town was dismantling the historical office in the back of the library. So we got going pretty quick. We were able to have a cease and desist. She stopped doing what she was doing. And I came down with John. I took everything that the commission needed out of that room. John took everything that the society t collects. So there are a lot of things that have passed back and forth through both areas. We both get donations of all kinds of memorabilia. Um, so I think that's something we need to sort of figure out. John? Yeah, I, I think uh, two of what you're going to decide, which way we go. But we have to look also, I gave up all my civil work about a year ago, but I was chairman of the building committee in Halifax, and I rented, renovated every town building down there as chairman. Uh, in this project, well, it's a police station, two walls, but this project could cost up to $200,000 because it's a municipality building. And it's, not, and it's going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. It's going to take uh, probably six months to a year just to evaluate what it's going to cost to do it. Correct. And then once you do that, whatever the South Shore could do, but a lot of times they can't get in and do municipal buildings on certain parts. And it's almost guaranteed the asbestos flooring tiles. But all those, all those have to come out anyways because if you take half, half the walls, they're only up to the You could have gaps. That's what I mean. The project is going to take time. Mm -hmm. And then once you decide roughly how much it's going to cost to do it, then your funding periods, I mean, basically, we, we would miss all the funding that would be available this year for next year. Okay. So okay. you're probably looking at two and a half, three years before you before we can get it up and running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's uh, so it's a lot of prep work. It's a lot of work behind the scenes to right. And and I was pointly told uh, by Lincoln this week that you're going to have to decide if you want to go along with the commission's name in in it. And I have the society. The project would probably fail. So you got to decide how you want to go, right? And you can go any way you want. Mm -hmm. I don't live in this town. I'm going to be 80 in a couple of months. <laughs> Getting tired. Uh, 
All the stuff that I own, I, I own, is the town of Witness. I do not want it. I got enough problems with health us. But I will make sure that it gets in a permanent location someplace. Uh, I'll have a society meeting uh, at the end of this month coming up. Uh, I have some ideas. The book, the last history book that we did, we made $12,000 up. And I have an idea for a book that uh, as long as I'm still printing, we can publish it at a reasonable cost uh, that would raise us that much more money. And, and that money, I sell that book every week mm -hmm. or every month. We're and, talking uh, about the red book and the green book? That most no, we're of talking us about the other one, the six by nine one. Oh, okay. The last one. Duval sells it down the store for me, and it's every month somebody comes in to buy it. Absolutely. And then the red and the green books, I collect them as families are cleaning out their parents' houses, and I resell them. So it's an income for the museum. And uh, so I, the biggest thing right now is you got to decide which way you want to go. Do you want to start one under the commission, or do you want to run it all under the society? Why can't we work together? We can work together, but you got to have the name. The commission can't be involved. The commission name. But the commission has been given the building. Nobody has been given the building. It's been the opportunity to see what that space is available. Okay. And, and until it's determined uh, what it costs to do it, I mean, the town might not want to spend $200,000. Mm -hmm. They'll just leave it as it is. But we, but we don't have the funds. So right now, nobody has the building and nobody's been promised the building. Okay. But if you want to take and add to the museum as it is. That's fine. Uh, as long as the building the main but then we get don't, sold. Then we don't have any... The commissions... One, one of the issues, John, is that A, the location of Harding right now mm -hmm. is down on Pond Street. It's not visible. Right. Well, it's the lack of Pond it, I'm all, well, I always had that because it used to be on the fourth floor. Right, right. So, but it's not good. We're still there for 19 years. Yep. I get now, uh, like last fall, I had a class reunion, about 40 people come in. And uh, what they did is they called up and they got pizzas and salads. And I put tables for them out on the boulevard and they had a picnic. <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but they did and they dropped about $75 in donations mm -hmm. for the museum. But that's, you know, so I mean, it's, uh, and of course, when I was in Bostonian, uh, the fifth grade students, the teachers at the fifth grade, put together a scavenger hunt in the museum, and we would bus, uh, they would hire buses because it was such a large group, and half the kids went around town and was told what all the stones were. Yep. And the other half were in the museum. Then it reversed around, and then they all come back, and we gave them a, a lunch at the thing. But, uh, and as I say, I have a lot of groups. Anybody here, all you got to do is pick up the phone, call how to print, and I'll open up the place for you. I want people to see it. I actually have uh, quite a few pictures in, right now in Millie's restaurant. That's my hangout, 7 o'clock every morning in the noontime. But uh, I get the wall space, because Richard Rose owns that now. Uh, and I, I just cover the walls and, and change it. But as I said, we, we, we've got to come to those decisions, mm -hmm. which way we want to go. And I don't care if the co commission, anybody in here can come in, just as uh, Marie said, the, the schools need a lot of work. Uh, Morton Sapler, from Sapler, remember Sapler? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he was going to do the schools, but Morty's uh, what, 97 now, 96. <laughs> And he just never got it done, was to organize pictures and then uh, have paragraphs under there when that school was built, when it was added on to, and, and all of that. And uh, the police department needs work on it. Uh, the churches are not too bad, but they all need work. So, and that's part of my next book, is the markers in town. Mm -hmm. I want to, we have several books now for the park for the, uh, uh, all the benches in town, all those things that people have donated money at permanent locations in town. 
I'd like to put them all into one book, like the uh, uh, Auto War Veterans, where streets are named for. Have a little <coughs> essay on what that little that who they are. Take, who they are. No, we have and I actually that. have all the information yeah, for that. Yeah, the veterans agent has a lot too. But that's my next book, uh, and that would take uh, hopefully sell as good as the last one. I mean, it sells over a period of 10 or 15 years. You keep selling. So anyways, that, that's the same. You have to decide what name you want to go under. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 have a, I have a question there, guys, yeah. is why can't we work as a team? Because well, we can't work as a team. Our goal. It's wide open. But you can't have that name because there's so many technicalities. The Whitman Museum? And everything else. The Whitman Museum has it. Whitman Historical Society. Okay, so that that's the museum. That is the private group. It's a private organization. Do you have a copyright on the name? Uh, I have to go way back for it. It's a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that's. So we would not be able to use the name Whitman Museum. Yeah, because that belongs to nobody. Really, it belongs to the historical. Okay, so we would be able to use it. Okay. Run by the historical society. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm at a loss, guys. Uh, well, um, I, I think if you go down and talk to Lincoln, which, which I have, that. which yeah. I have, but I don't understand why we can't have, as Molly suggested, the two arms of it. Well, because you can, but it's just, we are, it just makes things complicated. Well, it, the Dyer Memorial Library and the Historical Society of Old Abington live in the same building. Right. They are cataloged differently. And they're both private organizations. Yes, we are. But and they are. They would die. But is, they are intermingled. Right. Well, there's no longer they even mingled, but they're still private. And okay. what happens with Dyer is hundreds and hundreds of things of history that went, in, that went to Dyer. Correct. But the problem is they're well categorized, they're in by, they absolutely they're not are. visible. You can't go see them. Why? Well, because you can go in and ask, I want to see a book or something like that, but they're not on display. Because we don't have this space for it, I'm sorry. Right. And the Dyer is supported by a very, by a trust fund. They are, the Dyer. correct. And, uh, Marietta Dyer and the Colonel yeah. Joe Murphy. But the fact is that a lot of artifacts that should be shown can't be shown there. Well, we're in the process of changing that, but that's yeah, another that's story. Right. We're just going right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and right now we're in the process of trying to get rid of my stuff into the town, into a permanent location, and, and have it run uh, By as smoothly society. as this one. Okay, so my question is, where are you with the society? Well, we, we haven't met for the last two years because of COVID. Most of the people in the society are fairly old. Mm -hmm. I tried to have a meeting last fall. And, and it, it stormed and the electricity went out. And, and it's been customary. Mm -hmm. uh, we meet three meetings in the fall mm -hmm. and three meetings in the spring, mainly because January and February in March, you have what you have outside here. You know, always get rained out or snowed out or something. And in the summertime, uh, there was no air conditioning where we were. So uh, it was too hot to have meetings, and, and so we didn't have them in the summer. But uh, after, after that, we had regular meetings. We would have speakers every, every meeting come in and uh, talk. There was a lot, a lot of interesting people in town. Well, that's, that was what I envisioned for this site right. was to make all of that available to the public. Well, this would be a great site because society members could open it up on Sundays and Saturdays, we are more than and regular hours. And we are more than happy to work with the society and do that. Right, but it's difficult to have the two names together. The commission is a, is a town-run Thing. We are. The society is a private organization. The public town of Whitman owns this library, but the friends of the library also coexist in the same building. Right, but the town runs this building and it's a part of the municipality. I, I don't know what the 
the concept between the friends and the the body. friends are the money raising. Can we look into it a little further? And yeah, make yeah. Some absolutely. The legalities of uh, okay. what roles each uh, group could play. Absolutely. Because it sounds like there's some legal questions too. Yeah. yeah. Either um, the town council. And I mean, my, as I said, when I saw this. I appreciate what John has done through these years. It's an amazing place. Go down and look. But his building doesn't belong to him. It may be being sold. It may be torn down for public housing. So with all of those things, where is it going to go? So we finally have been given the opportunity to take over a location that cannot be sold out from under us, that cannot be taken away. But we need to do something now to start <coughs> that process. Basically, the whole process is started. You just have to determine where you want to take it. And I check with a legal counsel. OK, let's do that. John, what was the size of your space right now? Did you say square footage? Well, I have 65, 170,000. Really? Okay, that 48 by 48 is only like 2,300. Right, but you. So you, that's. You yeah. can have uh, change your displays. You know, right, a lot yes, of stuff absolutely. I, I, not show now. I thought maybe yours was smaller and somehow you could subdivide them, you know, historical and uh, society, I mean, society right. commission. Commission could always have a, a corner. So they could take the stuff out of their place and put it in there. And, what? and I would hope that commission members would be part of his society and they'd be the right Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And that's what I envisioned also. Yeah. Is that the two teams work together right. to make as, this available to well. the community. Yeah. 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 So. I, I check out the legal technicalities okay. of the funding. We can do that. How you handle the money. Yeah. If it's private, there's no questions about it. If it's a town. It might have to go into a revolving, yeah, revolving account and all okay. that stuff. It just complicates things. All that. right, so that should be our next step. Agreed? Okay. Just a, a, another question. I, I'm sorry, I seem to be... Do you, is there a chance, so that if you have an office now, I do. Okay, so if you're, the things that you're talking about that are taking up space in your office, are moved into the museum part. Would you have enough space for it to be just an office? <coughs> Excuse me, Molly. I didn't hear. Would you have space for it just to be an office? You know, if you take all of the things that a commission doesn't usually own and you put it into the museum area, would you still be keeping? Would you still be able to keep an office in the town hall? I would assume so. So that to me would. This is one of the things that I think in talking to your legal group or whichever, that you have questions. Like if you, if you keep that office and you're the commission there and then you have the town museum, all you're doing is helping with the society and putting together the museum. I mean, this is, this is just, hey, let's compromise. You know, it's, so we own the space, but they, own, they have the stuff. Basically, if you come right down to it, mm -hmm. everything I have is category, and everything that somebody gives me is welcome to take it back. So I should say I shouldn't own it, but nine out of ten, it's, it's usually people that have passed away, and, and they want it to be seen somewhere. So I have a lot of stuff coming to the museum in the next uh, month that that uh, where a couple passed away in town here. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of stuff. <coughs> and I, I was even listed in the will. Oh, that's that wonderful. It, that it came to me. It'd be shown. So, uh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So I recommend anybody come down anytime during the day, or at night, I'll make appointments at night. Uh, be more than happy to see what I've got. And I, but I would take that to your legal counsel and the town manager. I will. Yeah. I don't want this to be us versus you. I don't want this to be commission versus society. This is a community, and this will increase the community awareness of our history. And that's my biggest goal. This is a phenomenal town. We had the first Bell Foundry. 
in the United States. We, had so, we have so much history that needs to get out there so that people recognize who we are. As I've said before, we're not just the Toll House cookie. That's just a part of our identity. So if anybody has any further thoughts, um, I've passed around a sign-in sheet. I would welcome you to do that. Um, I will share that with John so that he also has the availability. From here, I guess my next step is to the count town council. Okay, can you tell us, will there be another meeting after, like, um, I I would like to schedule it within a month, Michael. Within a month. I would like to plan on coming to you in a month and having some determinations from the attorneys. We'll, we'll be having a meeting either the third or fourth week of this one, of, of March. March yeah. Yeah. And that'll be our regular scheduled meeting anyways. And you will let us all know when that is? I'll put it in the paper. Okay, thank you, John. <laughs> right, um, yes, sir. John, when's the last time you've been in your position? Oh, all right, so you walk through. Um, looking at, I mean, when they built that, it was an add-on to the town hall. And I don't know, I mean, as far as a carrying wall, if something had to be taken down, I can't see why it would be. I know that you have a bunch of offices that were built for the chief, the deputy chief, and stuff like that. You know, you may want to take down the walls between those two, a uh, couple of those offices, to make one bigger room, right. but I don't think that's a carrying one. It is not, says Bob Clarence. Right. Yeah, so yeah. We, we've actually, I made those plans for blocks. Yeah. But uh, the police station was built to go up. Yes. So yes. Up. Yeah, so right. the roof in the police station is a little stronger than it would be if it was a single story building. Yes. So right now, the plans are going to an engineer to all but one wall will probably be taken out of there. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and it's not a carrot. Because you need a big open space. Yes. Because if you don't have that open right. space, it's amazing how much stuff disappears. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, you can't have small rooms because it could be pocketed. Right. right. If if you want to come up and see this, the map, what we talked with Bob the other day is because this is the garage span yeah. and it's this wide, he believes that we will be able to take out many of these walls. Right. And he was thinking maybe we could keep the chief's room that was established as a study room so that people could take materials in and do research. Right. Did you allow for Todd's office to stay? He's waiting. I'm looking from <laughs> due attention down. Right. Yeah. So that all of that stuff, I think, belongs to the old building. Yeah. Okay. Because, I, you know, I'd like, like I said, I'd like from the... You got the you got the walkway that ends, and then you got the cells. Absolutely. Yeah. I would like where that walkway ends for that door that goes into the rest of the town hall would have to be locked. Would be sealed. Sealed. Yes. Uh, not. I wouldn't say well, sealed. Closed. Locked. Yeah. Because you want it. You want an entrance out in yeah. case of an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then everything yeah. towards the back is all yeah. the historical. Yeah. What we got is what you name it. Next, um, next month, I'll have a, a, a map that has not all that garbage on it. Right. And I, and I think um, whether, whether it's historical commission, or historical society, or uh, whatever you call it, I look at it this way. You can have a, you can have a building, but you've got to understand, too, it's going to be heat and water and, and things like that that will probably be on the town's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, yeah. You can't you can't yeah. separate the heat and the water. I mean, you know. You couldn't afford to run it because right. you don't take in that much money. Right. So that being said, the town will be paying for that. So yeah. I kind of think there may have to be a line item or a budget for town meeting to offset that to pay so you have money to pay for it, or it might be just incorporated in the rest of the the water sewer and the uh, heating system of the town. Yeah, the way the way we do it in Halifax. Yeah. They gave us the old library. Yeah. Plus, we have a working blacksmith shop and the original schoolhouse in the back of that. Uh, the town pays all the maintenance fees on the building and pays our heat. And but we have a maintenance department that does nothing but maintenance on the town buildings. Right. So, but the town would be responsible for operation of the building itself. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at, you know, I mean, uh, if you're saying that the society can bring in funds, but the commission, or is it the other way around, can't? Can, we cannot can't, fundraise. Huh? Cannot we, fundraise. we cannot fundraise. But, but we also have, have accept, access to grants. Right. What about having a, a, a bucket there and people throw in a couple, five bucks every time they go in? We have a gift account. Huh? We do have a gift account, yes. Yeah, I have a gift account. You can okay. that. All right. So that is that their max on the gift account? Not that I know of. Okay. So, that, so the monetary value, if people donate, you can't fundraise, but if they donate, it goes into the gift account. Exactly. Now, that gift account, what I'm saying is if there needs to be something done in the museum, whether work of some sort, to draw money out of that gift account, does it have to be appropriated to town meeting? No. We have, we have two different gift accounts. We have a, our general gift account, we have the gold star sign gift account. Um, no, it just has to be approved by the board of the uh, historical commission. Okay. And then I'm the treasurer, so I just signed Right, all right, so, all right, so, so the town doesn't really get involved. No, and you can establish another gift account. Right. I don't know purpose. if, I don't know, uh, and I haven't talked to Lincoln about this, but if in fact, you know, we've already said yes, let's do something with that section of the building. It's just gonna sit there and rock. Let's, let's keep it up. Does town meeting have to approve that? I don't know that answer. Well, if it, if it determined that it was, say, uh, $75,000 to renovate that building, then it would have to go for a town right, meeting. Yeah. If it would, right, if it would cost that and amount. CPA. I don't know. I mean, we, we'll have to see, we'll have have to see to that. that amount. Right, and we'll have to see what volunteers can do. I mean, um, I'm certainly sure South Shore Bochette can get involved as far as, you know, yeah, so getting stuff like that for a learning process. Um, so let's go, let's just, All right. let's not go too far right. ahead of us. Okay, can I recognize Elaine Bergeron? Yeah, just one more point on the CPA funds. What we get does not go away. So if we right. get 10000 in two years, we can bank that and then get 20000 the next year and so forth, depending on what's earned appropriately. So if it takes us a couple of years to get this up and running, there will be that CPA money that it's, it's for historical use. So the commission can come forth and ask to use it as well, I mean the society as well as the commission. But that money does not dissolve. It's not lost. It's not lost. Yeah, good to know. Thank you. Right. And, and also, the town hall has been, uh, is on the historical uh, Yes, it town, is. Right? So yes, that means yes. that police station is involved with that. So that part of the building would be classified as historical. Right? The building is listed on the Massachusetts Cultural Resource right. Inventory list. The entire the, building. The entire building. It is not <laughs> National <laughs> Register. Okay. I think so we're getting into weird technical CPA requirements. I think the only requirement for a historical project is that the for building stuff has to be recognized by that town's historical commission. Okay. Which I imagine we could do. Yeah. I would guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Done. I, I would also add that I've researched some cultural um, grants on Mass Cultural Council, not specific to our cultural council, but mm -hmm. um, historic facilities and cultural fund facilities. So there are grants, um, but I believe one of the contingencies <laughs> is the building has to be 125 years or greater. Older, and I don't know if that police station piece being, you know, from 1966. So that's getting into minutia and details. But the, but, no, um, the building itself is 1907. Yeah. yeah. So the addition was 1966. Yeah. But I have seen, um, John Campbell, other his historical societies request grants through Mass Cultural Council. We, we yes. Have been by yeah, yeah. Historical societies. So those are certainly available year after year. They're so always we need grant writers. Those. Yes. Yeah. What's that? All right. Anything else? else? Did not get the list. Um, can we say four weeks from now we would readjourn and hopefully come up with some solid answers from the attorneys? Anything else that we need to determine at this point? I guess we're done. Um, I have. Benjamin Hobart and Aaron Hobart's books up here. <clears throat> I have 
the house history books that I use to survey all of the properties in town. I have one of the Abington Town reports that date back to 1867, which you're welcome to look at. Uh, you remember that we were not incorporated until 1885. So at that point, we were still known as Abington or South Abington. So please feel free to come up and see any of the records that I have. Um, one month from today would be What is it? March 26th. March 26th. Same time, noon? That works for me. Any objections? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you serve a breakfast. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I wish. We could adjourn to Millie's first. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I want to thank everyone for being here, um, recognizing the Cultural Council, the selectmen, other members of the boards, the school committee I see out here. I see John Campbell from Harding Print. So we've got selectmen. We've got a nice broad spectrum of people. All of your help is needed, all of it is wanted, all ideas are welcome. This is an open project for the community. Thank you.